Do you pull out your credit card and shop online when you're emotional, when you're stressed, when you're anxious about something? Do you spend, even though you know you don't have the money, or even though you said you would not, even if you had the money, you wanted to use it for something else, but yet you find yourself spending emotionally. You know, emotional spending can be a lot like emotional eating, where you can use it as a way to cope with stress and cope with feelings. But just like emotional eating, the consequences stack up. And at some point, it can be completely unhealthy, especially for your finances. So I have just a few strategies, very simple ones to deal with emotional spending, to help you to take control of your habits when it comes to your finances. So the first thing is sleep on it. You know, when you find something you really like and it's something you didn't even know existed before you walked into a store or stumbled onto that website and all of a sudden you feel like you can't live without it, you have to have it now. You know, they're really good at that advertising when, <laughs> when they get you like that, but we've all been there. Here's the rule I use, sleep on it. If it feels like you have to have it right now, take a breath and say, you know what, if it's that important, if it's that good, when I wake up tomorrow, I'll still feel the same way. Most of the time you wake up the next day, you have completely different perspective and one day cannot hurt. So sleep on it. Here's number two, phone a friend phone a friend. So when you feel like you're about to do something that's irrational or just doesn't move you closer to what you really want in terms of your financial goals, call that person, not the other emotional spender, call that person that's good with their money, tends to be frugal, makes really good decisions and talk it over with them. Having another perspective can be really powerful. But here's the third thing and it's very related to phoning a friend. Never shop alone. Do not show up at a store when you know you don't really have the self-control to spend what you said you were gonna spend, what your budget was, don't show up alone. Because especially when you're feeling emotional, especially when you shop out of insecurity, when you're buying brands because they make you feel uh, more secure, more confident, more important, shop with someone else. When you do that, number one, it's just a sense of accountability. And oftentimes when you have behaviors that are counterproductive, there are things you will do alone that you simply won't do with other people. So don't shop alone if emotional spending is an area where you really struggle. Next, plan for it. There's nothing wrong with shopping. There's nothing wrong with treating yourself. Where the problem shows up is when you don't plan. So plan for the things that you want. When you are feeling like, hey, I'd really like to have that, write it down. I keep a little list in my phone. In fact, it becomes my ongoing Christmas list so that when Christmas comes around, I'm not like, oh my gosh, what should I get this person or that person or what do I want? Instead, when you do that, you're able to actually plan for things. Yeah, this is something I want. Maybe this month isn't good, but I could see three months down the road, I could save up for this. So plan for it. It helps you to not only feel in control, but it really helps you to take control of your finances. But I have just a couple of more. For the thing that you really want, when you think about your money, where do you ultimately want to be? How do you want to feel when it comes to your finances? Have a picture. Keep your goal in front of you. If your goal is paying off debt, keep that in front of you. If your goal is a certain amount in savings, put the number in front of you, put the date in front of you, and keep it somewhere you're gonna see it every single day. It might be in your closet. It might be on your mirror in your bathroom. It might be in your wallet. It might be on your computer screen. It might be on your phone where it's a screensaver, but keep it somewhere where you see it often. Even if you're not consciously looking at it, subconsciously you will remember where it is that you're trying to go. And that helps you to stay on track, truly stay on track with your financial goals. Okay, next, take credit cards out of your wallet. If you cannot control yourself, then just remove them. Put them somewhere where when you're out shopping, you have to actually go home to get the credit card. That gives you a little extra time to actually think about what it is that you're doing. So don't keep them there. Don't make it convenient. Maybe just keep your debit card on you and leave your credit cards at home if you really struggle badly with, um, with emotional spending and taking out those credit cards and then later going, oh my gosh, how did I spend that much? 
Just don't put yourself in that position. But here's the last one, and this is my favorite. Use cash. Cash. I know, most people don't even carry cash in their wallets anymore, but when you have cash, it's real. It is a lot harder to spend more cash than it is to plop down a credit card. So if you know what your budget is, go ahead and just take it out. Go to the ATM machine and say, this is how much I'm spending. That way when you get to the store, there are limits. Cold, hard cash limits. So that's it. You can overcome emotional spending, but you have to be intentional. And these are some of the ways that you can do that. So if you want more life strategies, just visit me on my blog. It's ValerieBurton.com forward slash blog. I'll talk to you next time.